Hey y'all, what if I told y'all that the classic horror movie Jeepers Creepers was inspired by a real life killer? If y'all remember this opening scene in the movie, this is quite similar to today's true crime story. On April 15, 1990, a couple named Ray and Marie Thornton were out for a drive in Coldwater, Michigan. All of a sudden, a van passes them high speed. This kind of surprised the couple, but they just kind of went on about their business. As the couple continued their drive, Marie notices the same van that passed them earlier. She saw a man disposing a large white sheet covered in blood in a large tank by this abandoned schoolhouse. Seconds later, that same man she saw... What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to the channel, man. How you guys doing? You guys already know what we do here, man. But if you don't, if you're brand new, we break down scary and creepy videos, man, on and there, on the from YouTube videos to IG videos to TikTok clips, Facebook clips, man. Anything weird, usually I'm explain you can find right here on this channel. Just like I want to say thank you to the Seekers who's been top name with us, man. Subbing up to the channel. Really appreciate that, man. You're seeking the truth, just like you. So let's check out this video today, bro. Seek the truth. Some of the scariest last words ever said by serial killers. And I found all these on Reddit. And finally, we have Eileen Wamos. Eileen was on death row for killing seven men between 1989 and 1990. And her last words were, I'd like to say I'll be sailing with The Rock and I'll be back on Independence Day with Jesus, June 6th, just like the movie, Big Mothership and all. I'll be back. Hearing all of those was haunting, but that's why. Seekers, what do you guys think, man, of those freaking last words from those individuals, man? Like I said, bro, it's hard, man, if you can sum up your life in just a couple of words. And those were some choicey words that you should have had, bro. Some of them saying they was going to come back. Some of them was just freaking completely gone, man. That one, that one freaking confession though gave me chills. He said, "Well, not be able to freaking feel the blood gushing out of my head. Like, what the hell type of thing is that to say, bro? Your last word, serious. Tell me what you guys name, man. Just imagine capturing this on your ring camera. It was 2018 and just outside of her condo in Phoenix, Arizona, when Jessica Catania got an alert on her phone and saw this. According to her eventual statement, she immediately realizes she's in danger. She locks her bedroom door, she starts dialing 911, but that's when she heard it. So whoever this man was, he, he then pries open the living room window and pops out the screen. He's in the house. But this woman, Jessica, she's like, incredibly resourceful in a stressful situation. She immediately grabbed a hammer, any weapon that she could find from her closet, and she hides in her bathroom. But while she's waiting in there, she's got the door locked, but it would only be about three minutes before she eventually hears police inside her condo. The problem is, they never found the man. To this day, she has no idea who this man was or why he broke into her condo. In the investigation, police would eventually nickname him Smiles. Smile Seekers? How can they find no evidence, man? See, cause could you guys imagine that, bro? Like, you just in a freaking bathroom waiting, bro. Cause you see somebody freaking just broke into your freaking house. Think he said he got in through the screen door, man. Yeah, please those screen seekers, bro. Shoot, that about to make, make me replace my man, cause they're just so easy to freaking to get into, bro. That's freaking insane, man. How he's able to get into the house while there was no trace of him, bro. He just got away with it, man. I'm telling you, Seekers, bro. This world today, man, is freaking crazy, bro. You always got to be aware, man. You never know what can happen, bro. Good thing she was alert. We need to talk about this photo. Because Josh Maddox was found inside this chimney with his knees bent over his head. And he had been there for seven years. So what happened to him and how did he end up stuck inside a chimney for that long? Allegedly, Josh went out on a walk one day and completely disappeared. Until one day, a builder from Colorado Springs wanted to demolish his old abandoned cabin. And that's when Josh was found curled up and mummified inside the chimney. But the strange thing is, even though his body was found with its knees bent over his head, there were no injuries or broken bones. The coroner who performed Josh's autopsy believes he crawled up the chimney himself. And he curled up in that position 
position to protect himself in something. But this case gets even more bizarre from here. Not only was Josh found in such an unnatural position, but he was found only wearing a thermal suit. The rest of his clothes were in the cabin neatly folded. So why would he fold up his clothes and then crawl up the chimney? The chimney also had a heavy steel mesh grate built into it. So it would have been impossible for anyone to slide back down the chimney. Many people disagree, but this terrible incident was eventually ruled as an accident, even though we'll never truly know what Josh wanted to protect himself from by crawling up the chimney. Follow for more. This woman un- See, cause what do you guys think, man, about that case? Is that an accident, bro? But then I get to me, as it said, like, that his clothes were freaking perfectly folded, and it looks like they were running for something, man, so I don't think that could have been an accident, bro. It has to be more to that case, man. For him to go over to, to him trying to climb up that chimney like that. Has to be more to that case, secrets, man. Tell me, secrets, should I freaking tap into that case for a day deeper? Alive to her neighbor all because he did not accept her Christmas gift. Hi, my name is Ethan, and warning, this is a dark case. To really get into this story, 37-year-old Melissa Young was arrested for the brutal killing of her next-door neighbor, Alan Williamson, on Christmas Day of 2013. In court, she claimed that mental health issues was the reason behind her attack. However, she told investigators a different story. Her motive was due to Alan not accepting her Christmas gift. What was in the gift was a pair of unisex trainers and a copy of the Sun newspaper's 2014 calendar. Melissa claimed that he would not accept the gift even after she basically begged him and that's what made her want to kill him. She pleaded guilty to homicide in 2014 and received a 20 year sentence. While in jail she has also assaulted two female police officers and let this just be a note to always accept a gift. Oh my gift seekers man. People gotta be a man in bro. India became infected with a deadly plant fungus in the world's first case of human infection. The 61-year-old man went to the hospital with complaints of recurring cough, mm -hmm. hoarseness of voice, difficulty swallowing, a sore throat, and fatigue that had been lasting about three months. The man who was not named is a mushroom hunter and had no underlying health conditions that would put him at risk. Mm -hmm. It is completely unclear when he contracted the infection since he waited a while to go to the hospital. Doctors performed an x-ray and CT scan on the man. The x-ray on his chest came back normal, but the CT scan results showed a paratracheal abscess on his neck. That's what this is right here. Mm. Paratracheal abscess can block airways and lead to life-threatening infections, which can be deadly if not caught and treated quickly. The pus was completely drained from the abscess and was sent to the World Health Organization in Northern India for testing, and the man was given two antifungal medications to take for the next two months. Doctors diagnosed the man with this, which I cannot pronounce, and it is a plant oh. fungus that causes silver leaf disease in plants. Silver leaf infects the wood and leaves of some trees, causing them to turn a silvery gray color and is spread by airborne spores. Researchers Ooh. shared that until this case, there has been no evidence that humans could be infected by this particular fungus. Of all the millions of fungi out there, currently just a few hundred can affect humans and animals as well as plants. One researcher writes, quote, over the past several decades, multiple new pathogenic fungi have emerged. The worsening of global warming and other civilization activities opens Pandora's box for newer fungal diseases. Rising temperatures can expedite the number of mutations that occur in fungi, increasing drug resistance and adapting them to survive in humans. Mm. That's freaking pretty scary, Seekers, man. Freaking new fungi infections and stuff happening, but like you said, that was the world's, I guess, first case. It goes to show you, man, how freaking all the freaking world's progressed, bro. Like, that new fun guys and stuff, man. Like, if it can uh, freaking affect humans, bro, that's new freaking diseases and stuff. We do not need that right now, bro. That's basically it. Yes. <laughs> Feeling like the freaking last of us, man. Remember that episode of that freaking doctor talking about, you know, the fungi and the diseases and stuff, bro? I remember that, bro. It sent, like, chills down my damn spine when I saw that episode. It's crazy, man. People got to be more aware, bro. What's going on around the world, man? I didn't even know something like that was even possible. So I watched these videos with you guys, Seekers, man. My daughter died. Still calling me daddy. She wasn't old enough to even get to the stage to call me dad. It's a slap in the face to all of you, Valdi, especially the ones that lost a loved one. The AR-15 you get if you donate $5,000 to the NRA. The one at the bottom 
killed 19 kids and two teachers. The CEO of a gun manufacturing company, Christopher Kiloy, defended this as an inanimate object. An inanimate object that shot 100 rounds in two and a half minutes, killing my little cousin, Annabelle Rodriguez, 10 years old. Children were murdered. Murdered and taken from them. My granddaughter was murdered. All we were asking for is some compassion and some respect. This is a deliberate disrespect for the grief of these families and an attempt to shut them up, saying that their sorrow should not get in the way of our fun. This isn't something that should even be discussed. The life of a child is way more important than any NRA fundraising event. Hey y'all, what if I told y'all that the classic not. horror movie Jeepers Creepers was inspired by a real life killer? If y'all mm -hmm. remember this opening scene in the movie, this is quite similar to today's true crime story. On April 15, 1990, a couple named Ray and Marie Thornton were out for a drive in Coldwater, Michigan. All of a sudden, a van passes them high speed. This kind of surprised the couple, but they just kind of went on about their business. Mm -hmm. As the couple continued their drive, Marie notices the same van that passed them earlier. She saw a man disposing a large white sheet covered in blood in a large tank by this abandoned schoolhouse. Seconds later, that same man she Ooh. saw followed the couple for several miles. He saw the couple when he disposed the bloody white sheet and decided to go after them. Mm. Luckily, the couple was able to lose him. Let me tell you about Ray and Marie. These two were so bold that they decided to go back and find the man so Damn. they can write down his license plate. They went back and they saw the man changing license plates on the side of the road, and Marie also saw that there was blood on the interior of the passenger side door. So they got the license plate information and went back to the abandoned schoolhouse, and that's when they discovered the bloody white sheet, and they called 911. Mm -hmm. What Ray and Marie didn't know that day was that 46-year-old Dennis Depew murdered his wife, 48-year-old Marilyn. Dennis and Marilyn were married for 18 years, and Marilyn was just not happy in the relationship, and she wanted a divorce. Dennis was mad about the divorce, plus the joint custody between their three children. Ooh. That day, Dennis and Marilyn got into a heated argument, and Dennis pushed Marilyn down the stairs in front of their children. Dennis told them that he was going to take their mom to the hospital, and that was the last time that they saw their mom. The next day, Marilyn's body was found alongside a road, and she had a bullet wound in her head. There, the manhunt for Dennis DePew began. Dennis created a new identity, moved to Louisiana, and even had a girlfriend. Almost a year after the murder, Dennis was seen, and he led the police on a 15-mile chase from Louisiana to Mississippi. After refusing to pull over, the police created a roadblock and shot his tires. Oh. When Dennis stopped the car, he pulled out a 357 Magnum handgun and shot himself. Yes, y'all, he took the coward way out. You'll be surprised how many horror movies out there that are inspired by real life killers. Alright, y'all, I'll be back to do more true crime videos for you guys. Secret, man. Like I said, but I'll be telling... I need to tap in with us, man. I've been saying, but like how these movies and messages and stuff, man, like these movies, TV shows, like we think it's like just a story and stuff like that, but no, there's like some messages behind the stories. They can be based off like true stories, but they just turned it into something else, man. So I really got to think about that, put that in this perspective when watching these horror movies and stuff like that. Like it could really be based off a true story, man. And they just taking it and just mixing it up, just, you know, for, for some entertainment, bro. Cause I never knew that, man. Deepest Creepers, bro, based off a true story? It's bone chilling, man. Truly. It makes you think about how many of these other horror movies and stuff like that is based off of true stories. It really gets you thinking, Seekers.
create uh, living zombies with uh, muriatic acid in the, in the drug. One of those failed experiments to create a living zombie was conducted on this 14-year-old boy. Jeffrey had drilled a hole in his head and poured in acid, a crude attempt at lobotomy that none of his victims survived. And the killing wasn't, wasn't the objective. I just wanted to have the person under my complete control uh, to do this as I wanted. It's not easy to say that, but that's, that's what the motive was. You wanted to make a living zombie, bro? Who was speaking every single time, man? Like I said, when I watch these videos, I learn something new, bro. I never knew you could try to make a freaking living zombie, bro. The things that those freaking victims had to go through, man, it's really, truly, it's freaking sinister, bro. Put like acid in his head and try to make a living zombie, man? What even possesses a person to even do that or hold those type of thoughts? Seekers, bro. This world. It's not, it's not even no words for that one, man. Tell you, bro. I watch these videos and learn something new every day, bro. Like, I've heard some of the freaking Jeffrey Dahmer's, the stuff he did, but I never knew he tried to make living zombies. Like, what the hell? Why on earth would you have hurt those people? Why did you kill those people? I know no comments, no comments. I, I cannot answer you at this time. And that's why you killed them. Right. Right. Not because I was angry with them, not because I hated them, but because I wanted to keep them with me. Nonetheless, yeah. you killed seven men. Yes, you and did. And I'm asking you, what brought you to kill the seven and men? And I'm telling you because the cops let me keep killing them, Nick. Don't you not, get it? Not every That was her answer because the cops got let him kill. <sighs> this is the stuff that makes people be saying society, but we're cooked, bro. That was her answer because the cops kept letting them kill him. Like, what type of answer is that, man? No one more saying you just saw that first guy just smiling, saying, I can't see nothing at this time, bro. Like, what? There's no explanations needed, man. We, we all know what they freaking do. <sighs> Seekers, bro. Man, it's a society, but we gotta do better, man. Be better. Seekers, have you have you guys ever has that happened to you, man? Like smell smoke, but there was nothing around, so that, that means you was around spirits. I don't think that ever happened to me before. Hmm. The more you know, man. I never thought about it like that, bro. So if you smell smoke, man, up and around, but that means you could be picking around up uh, around some spirits' energy. Is it good or bad energy, bro? We need to know that. That's the freaking true question, man. You always want to be around good spirits, bro. Keep that bad energy, bad juju away from me, bro. We don't mess with that over here, Seekers, man. We're all about positivity. I'm going to have to check up on that one. Now, if you followed me for any amount of time, you'll know that I've already spoken about Elsa Gate once before. Mm -hmm. If you have no clue what Elsa Gate is, let me give you a brief rundown. Elsa Gate refers to a internet phenomenon which happened maybe five six four years ago now on youtube kids and what it would consist of is these channels would upload videos with elsa mostly elsa and spider-man and have really inappropriate thumbnails and um, here is a very brief example behind me and these sweet. thumbnails were that graphic and disgusting and the videos would be very unsettling as well for like children audience mm. and due to this youtube did actually start taking down all of these videos and these videos raked in millions of views from little children so the people behind them were were making bank 
But oh my goodness, it does not stop there. In fact, not has it stopped, it's gotten worse. Mm. So after YouTube stepped in, Elsagate did die down. But people have worked their way around it. It's back, and it's worse, and it's with lots of different characters. Now some of the thumbnails I'm about to show I've had to blur, or, or like scribble out because they are that graphic. Mm. Here is just one example. Example number two. Example number three and example number four. Now I just want you to keep in mind that these are targeted to children and on the children's version of YouTube. I don't know if, about you but I find this genuinely sickening. Like this is so gross and I would love to know what actually possesses people to make videos like this and aim them at children. Like I understand children think haha poo funny but there's a line. Like there's, there's a line. Not only that, some of these thumbnails and videos are ads so i don't know how ads work on youtube but i'm guessing youtube you have to pay youtube for it to be advertised and they have to monetize that and make sure the video is appropriate to be monetized i could be completely wrong again with other famous characters as i said this has come back the videos are still pretty much available all over the internet all you have to do is search in a child's character and scroll for a little while and trust me you'll come across something but this time nothing seems to be happening about it and i don't think anything will and the reason for this is i think it's too too hard to monitor for all we know these thumbnails could just be clickbait but like i said just gross really really gross i, was I think i remember hearing about that before and i guess when it was really popular like i said it kind of died it down but uh... Like that poop thumbnail, man, I saw it. Oh, some people Spider-Man drinking poop. Like, come on, man. Like, you can be better than that, bro. And that one of the freaking cracking in that um, monster's mouth. I'm like, what the hell type of thumbnail is that? I don't think your yeah, kids needs to freaking see that, bro. Poop they freaking minds and stuff like that, man. We need to... Gotta be better, bro. You know why? The freaking reason behind this session. You know why they did Because you know why? Because they making freaking bank, bro. That freaking... Off those videos, man. Seekers, bro. We gotta be better, bro. Like I said, as a people, everybody needs to be better. They're just doing that for money, man. Like I said, money is the root of all evil, bro. On August 12, 1967, 19-year-old Julie Helgeson and her friend, 18-year-old Roy Ducat, set up their sleeping bags under the stars, so no tent, about mm. 500 meters away from the Granite Park Chalet in Glacier National Park, which is in Montana. The two were going to get to watch this crazy lightning storm that was going on, just this amazing show, before they would eventually fall asleep. Eventually they did fall asleep, only to be awakened a few hours later at 12.30 a.m. by this horrible smell. And very quickly, Julie, to her horror, discovers where this smell is coming from. Damn. There's an adult grizzly bear just looming over the two of them oh my in the goodness. And she whispers over at Roy, and she says, play dead. But as soon as she says this, the bear just rips Roy out of his sleeping bag. It jumps on Roy's back, and it begins biting his shoulder before it moves down and begins biting his legs, and then it's biting him on the back. Now, Roy, amazingly, is able to stay silent, stay limp. He plays dead. And when the bear thinks that it's killed Roy, it turns to Julie. And now Roy can hear the sound of this bear biting into Julie through her sleeping bag, and Julie immediately begins screaming for somebody to come help them. At this point, the bear picks her up and begins dragging her downhill away from the chalet towards the woods. Roy he gets up and he kind of runs, hobbles to this camper that's not too awfully far away, and he's pounding on the door. A man opens up the camper door and sees him all bloodied. The man gives him some medical aid, and they call for help. They call rangers. A helicopter comes in, gets Roy, flies him to a hospital, and, you know, he makes it just fine. And then this park ranger is gathering a group of people to go look for Julie in the darkness, but it takes them two hours to gather enough people where they feel safe. Eventually, they get about a dozen people, including a doctor, and they go down the hill in search of her. They come across a blood trail, and about a hundred yards away from where she was initially attacked, in the woods, they come across Julie. And amazingly, she's alive. Mm. But her right forearm has been gnawed down to the bone. She has puncture wounds in her throat, 
and in her chest, in her lungs. She has bite marks all over her legs, which have since stopped bleeding, which is not a good sign. So they scoop her up, they bring her back to the chalet, they get her there at about 3.45 a.m., where two doctors who are staying at the chalet begin to work on her. But very quickly they realize she's lost too much blood and they just don't have what they need to save her. There's no way that they're going to save her life. So they do the only thing that they can think to do, which is give her an injection of painkillers to ease her passing. And then a priest um, held her hand and gave her her last rites until he felt her go limp and she was pronounced dead at 4.12 a.m. What nobody knew was just miles away, a different bear attacked a different girl, and it was much worse. Ooh. Stages, man. That's how I said, when you go, when you going out camping, man, you have to be freaking careful, because you never know what could happen, man. You're in the woods, wilderness, bro. Like I said, bears, wolves, anything, man, can, can be out there lurking in the dark, bro. If you're going to do that, man. Uh, I freaking advise to, um, our seekers, bro, to be safe, man, and to have a weapon out there, man, so you can always protect yourself, defend yourself, or whoever you with, so you won't be in a situation like that, man. They were just trying to watch a freaking lightning storm, freaking fell asleep, bro, and look what happened, man. I'm surprised the freaking, the guy, he survived that time. They had to play dead. That was the only option, man. But I think what freaking messed it up was when they said it took two hours, man, when they had to find everybody. That was just time wasted, and I think it was already too late by then, bro. Tragic, tragic story secrets, man. If you guys stay with me to the end of the video, man, you're a true seeker, seeking the truth. I really appreciate you, man. I appreciate the support on the channel, guys. Make guys, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Hit that post notification bell. Hit that like button, man, so we guys we can grow the seekers to even bigger and better heights. I really appreciate you guys' support, man. We're growing. I see you guys supporting the videos. I see all you guys' comments, man. I just want to say I greatly appreciate it. You guys going to catch you in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, Seekers. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to the channel. You guys already know what we do here, man. We break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, man, from TikTok videos to IG reels, man, to YouTube videos, anything weird, usual, and explain, you can find right here on this channel. I just want to thank the Seekers, man, um, who's been tapping in with the channel, who's been subbing up. Greatly appreciate that, man. We're seeking the truth just like you. That's why you found this channel. Um, found this video for you guys today, man. Let's check it out than a year? Well, that's exactly what happened to these three astronauts. They came back to Earth after spending 371 days in space when their return capsule was unexpectedly hit by space junk. When the three men, Sergei, Dimitri, and Frank, were launched back in September 2022, they were told that they were only going to spend six months in space, but that later turned into more than a year. And that's because the accident caused so much damage to the radiator, so they had to wait for a replacement capsule to be launched back into space. When it finally arrived, the three astronauts were safely brought back to Earth and landed in a remote area of Kazakhstan on September 27th, 2023. Even though they were okay, they explained how tough it was spending so long in space and the psychological damage. And you might think that 371 days is an absurd amount of time in space, which it is, but Russia still holds a world record of 437 days in space, which was set in the mid-1990s. This is why you should be... Seekers, man, could you imagine being, I guess, like, not touching, I guess, solid ground for more than a, a year? They was in space for that long, bro. Because I guess they said something else with the launch, man. And like I said, what she said was right. Like, it, that's like a freaking mind battle, bro, going on in your head, man. Being, I guess, away from your family friends from that long, bro. But the thing that got me freaking spooked is that they said from Russia, they spent, they held the whole world record while that. Heck, what in space that long, bro? That's kind of weird, man. Got me asking questions. Be hmm. careful of some photographers. Zoe Fit, a model on Instagram, was doing a photo shoot with a photographer she thought she trusted. The photographer's name was William Francis. But when Zoe went to go change her clothes in the bathroom, she noticed a little light on the charger brick. This one. She even found a chip inside. When she plugged the chip in her camera, this is what she found. Him plugging it up. Before I continue, I've been using this crazy fitness app. It even gives you the exact program to get the body you want. Link in my bio if you want to get in shape too. Hmm. Zoe became devastated and even weirded out of the whole situation. And the scary part is you can get these cameras at places like Walmart and Amazon. What the hell? 
seekers, man. Did you guys see that freaking camera? You would never suspect, bro. It looks like a freaking innocent wall charger, bro. Man, I'm telling you, man. Technology is getting too advanced nowadays, bro. It's like you're, you can constantly be watched, man, like 24-7, bro. You don't even know. He's a photographer, so you know how many how much access he had to those girls, bro. She's probably not even, um his her, his only victim, bro. Probably been doing that a numerous amount of times. Man, bro, how could somebody even let somebody sell something like that, man? That's like too dangerous, bro. A wall charger disguised as a camera. I'm about to have me checking all the freaking charges in my name house or something, bro. Making sure nobody ain't trying to watch me. <laughs> Horrifying websites on the internet that you should never visit, part one. GoodbyeWarden.com gives the last words of 565 Texas inmates who were executed on death row. And some of the statements are absolutely gut-wrenching, with many asking someone to take care of their children when they're gone, and others insisting upon their innocence. DeathDate.info is a dark, morbid site that asks you to enter your name, age, weight, and height before spitting out the exact date that it thinks you're going to die. The site also provides you with three words that it says will be related to your death in some way. PlaneCrashInfo.com has an extensive database filled with recordings, pictures, and transcripts of the final moments of a plane crashing. And MidnightInTheDesert.com has unedited footage of the 67 exorcisms of Annalisa McKell. And trust me, her demonic screams will haunt your nightmares. Bro, those websites, man. Especially ones about to speak in the date you put in your weight, date, age, bro. And you, and you can figure out when you're gonna freaking just eat it. I don't know who would even make a website like that, but who wants to know about something like that, man? I wouldn't even go searching for that. That just put bad energy out to the freaking universe, bro. Seekers, and, and you know we're all about good vibes over here, man. So I wouldn't even freaking attempt to even do something that's freaking stupid or scary, bro. That's just me. I know some people would probably do it in a heartbeat. They say, I wanna find out. Not me. Seekers, what do you guys think about that, bro? Edit. I, I caught the edit, man. I gotta call him out when I see it. That's clearly an edit. <laughs> it's funny, dude. This is 22-year-old Brett Barlow, and he was seeking nothing but revenge. Let's rewind a little bit. In 2016, a dump truck driver had failed to slow down and re-rented a minivan, causing the driver of the minivan to pass away. That driver was Brett Barlow's mother. The man responsible for her death was Donald Calder Jr., and let me be clear that this was just one horrific accident. He was arrested, served his time, and later released, and Brett still seeked revenge. On November 28, 2023, in North Carolina, Rhett had allegedly went onto a hitman website where he placed an order for Donald to be unalive. According to the New York Post, that same day he apparently purchased an AR-15. The hitman was indeed real, but reported Rhett to the police, causing him to be arrested. As of right now, Rhett is being held on a $1 million bond and has sparked a lot of controversy. Some are saying that Rhett had every right to seek revenge, while others are saying that Donald had already paid for his actions for a mistake he made. The hitman that reported Rhett to police didn't get arrested as well because he reported Rhett to police, but let me know your thoughts on this case. You have saw me sir. Oh, that one. Yeah, I guess I guess see why it freaking cause controversy, man. You know, people want want vengeance and then there's other people said he served his crime, so I guess he ever did his time, so I guess they figured the situation's over, man, but I guess the son, man, freaking it impacted him differently, obviously, because the person who passed away was his mom, so he just wanted vengeance, man, and he wanted to get at any cost, bro. Behind a hit, man, I don't think that was the move to, to go, bro. I can't believe there's even a website where you could just type it up and just, hey, I'm gonna hire a hit, man. Like, what the hell, bro? 
I'm telling you seekers, man, the things I've been learning watching these videos, bro, that's why, like I said, I freaking, I'm seeking the truth just like you, man. I'm a fellow seeker out here, bro. Told Duran Fitness Influencer has died by own choice just days after her daughter's 12th birthday. Michelle Young was a staff sergeant who enlisted at just 17 years old. Hmm. The now 34-year-old Sir to tours in Afghanistan most recently in 2021. That same year she extended her military contract to serve 20 years. As of September she had served 16. Military oh, values oh. ran deep in her family. The soldier often spoke of her grandfather, a Navy veteran. In her free time Young worked as a crisis and trauma response volunteer while also volunteering at a local women's and children's homeless shelter. It's unclear how or where it happened. Sarah Main, the coup of veteran-owned Akpiwear brand Curves and Combat Boots broke the news of Young's death through a GoFundMe campaign. Michelle was a beautiful soul, an amazing friend, a single mother, a soldier and is proof you never know what someone is going through or what demons they may be fighting. Mm. Young's daughter was her whole world and the campaign was organized to help Gracie with anything she may need. We know Michelle would appreciate us all looking out for her now. Crazy, bro. You never know what somebody's going through, man. You just never know. Always we gotta check up on your people, man. Did you know that Chris Watts, the man who killed his entire family in 2018, has seen his daughter's spirit in his jail cell? In the book, Letters from Christopher, author Sherilyn Cattle claims that she received a letter from Chris where he details seeing his daughter in a dream in his jail cell. In this dream, he claims to have seen his daughter Cece dancing on the chair next to his bed in the cell. And he claims that while he saw her dancing in the jail cell, the folders and other items he had sitting there started to move by themselves. In the same book, he also claims to have talked to his dead wife, who he murdered on the phone from prison. There are multiple articles talking about this happening online, and it's also reported that the only things he's allowed to have in his cell are photos of his family and a Bible. He's also stated in the past that he hopes to be reconnected with his family one day, but I don't know if that's going to happen. If you want to hear more of the paranormal claims surrounding the Watts murders, go listen to my podcast, Murder in America. Our episode is an hour and 20 minutes long, and we go super in-depth in the case file. And I guarantee if you listen to our podcast, you'll learn new things that you've never heard or seen before. I have to freaking check out that freaking podcast, bro, because I didn't even saw that kiss a couple of times. But the hell he said that his daughter and his freaking dead wife, the ones, you know, he did the act who was communicating him in the cell. I don't know if he's doing that for attention, man, or they truly, I guess, trying to communicate with the man and, I guess, haunt him, I guess, haunt him for his wrongdoings, bro, to them. It's people, bro. When they say they're communicating these spirits, bro, you just, you never know, man. I'm trying to talk to a man, relay a message. What do you guys think, Seekers? Edit. Sorry, have to call it out like a secret. Once again, another child has been failed by the foster system. On November 2015, a 27-year-old Jennifer Rosenbaum called police when her two-year-old foster daughter, Layla Daniel, began choking on chicken. The dispatcher walked Jennifer through the Heimlich maneuver to try and save Layla's life, but it was too late. When Layla's body was examined, it was clear that she was starved, she had bruises, abrasions, 11 injuries to her torso, and an injury to her liver consistent with punching her abdomen. And according According to the pathologist, Layla's pancreas was also separated in two pieces. But Jennifer's defense argued that the injuries were actually from the Heimlich maneuver. Layla's older sister, who was four years old, was also fostered by Jennifer and her husband Joseph, but she was immediately taken away after Layla's death. But what's crazy about this story and could have possibly saved Layla's life is that this couple never turned in the correct paperwork and only went through a quick screening process to qualify to be foster parents. But also, I question question how family services failed to notice the bruises and cuts on Layla's body during their visits. Jennifer was charged as the primary abuser while Joseph was accused of pretty much turning a blind eye. She was sentenced to life in prison and Joseph faces up to 30 years on second degree murder. The thing that was scary to me is like, you, you heard about what she said about the paperwork, how they were just able to freaking get access to the freaking kid like that, man. It's like the people... They're not freaking doing their jobs, bro. And you see how it affects everybody else, man. It's like if one person don't do a job, it's like it's a domino effect that can freaking change somebody's life forever, bro. Just like the simple things, man. It's the simple details, bro, that you can't miss because you never know what's going to happen, bro, in the future, but the outcome of it. It's just a sad and tragic case, the seekers. Truly.
This right here mm. is a strange true crime case involving two sharks. In 1935, fishermen caught a shark and put it in the aquarium in Sydney. A crowd came to see the shark and miraculously, great timing, it vomited a severed hand and a forearm out. The forearm had a boxing tattoo on it and the hand still had fingerprints. It belonged to Jim Smith, a petty criminal and a boxer. Upon examination, it was found that the limb was deliberately cut off with a knife. This opened a whole murder investigation. What makes it more interesting, the tiger shark did not eat the human arm. A smaller shark ate it and then the tiger shark ate that shark. Jim Smith, the boxer, was last seen at the Cecil Hotel with some business buddies. And by business buddies, I mean everyone that commits insurance fraud. Two men, Brady and Holmes, were both arrested on suspicion of the murder, and later on they confessed to doing it. Mm. Apparently Brady cut up Smith, put him in a box, and tossed it into the bay. And that's when that shark ate the remains, and then the tiger shark ate that shark. It's kind of crazy how this whole thing came full circle like that. Mm. Let me know what you guys think about this case in the comment section below. This one... That case, man, you gotta see how it was, it was like a freaking loop, bro. Like that freaking shark in the aquarium, man. The freaking, I guess, yeah, you know, traumatized. I guess those people there for freaking ever, bro. But here, how it was all over in freaking insurance fraud, bro. And that shark, and it, the shark ate the remains, and that freaking, and the other shark ate the freaking tiger shark, man. It was just like a big loop, bro. It was like, he was gonna escape that, bro. That his actions, the people who did that actions were gonna get brought to light, man. That's just insane, bro. To even think about that, man. Ooh. Like, imagine this for being in an audience. You think you're seeing a shark, bro. It just spits out somebody's freaking arm, bro. Imagine the kids and stuff being there, man. Traumatizing them, bro. Like, over a freaking insurance fraud. Over money, bro. The root. A woman got a man beaten to death in the streets of Baltimore by screaming. This is Latiqua Mays, and she was 20 years old when all this went down. So Latiqua had lived in Baltimore, Maryland for a very long time. So a little while before this incident, Latiqua was living in a boarding house with one of her closest friends. Mm. And one evening, this man named Donald Robinson broke into their room at the boarding house and assaulted her friend right in front of her. Now, obviously, this was a horrible thing for Donald to have done, but Latiqua didn't think that Donald had been given a long enough prison sentence for the assault. So one day while Latiqua was walking down the street in Baltimore with her father, she came across Donald. She saw him out in the free world. Mm. That's when she started to scream, he graped me, he graped me, pointing at Donald. Now, I'm pretty sure she didn't know exactly what was happening, but she incited people to violence and then ordered a group of men that were nearby to start beating him. So these young men who were at a basketball court nearby joined in. They started beating, punching, kicking Donald. Ooh. They held him down and mercilessly beat him in the middle of the street while Latiqua pepper sprayed him. And later on, Donald was eventually taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead from his injuries. Even Latiqua's own father, Willie Mays, joined in on the attack, and he was eventually sentenced to two years in prison for second-degree murder. And Latiqua, she was sentenced to six years in prison. And for a while in her sentence, she was in solitary confinement. Now, I don't know what happened to her after all this. I don't know where she's at now. She's out of prison by now. But the mob violence in this story is absolutely insane. And I can't believe this man was murdered in the middle of the street in broad daylight by a group of people. I got a lot. That shows, that goes to show you, man, the power of words. But when she just said one thing, man, it's like, that just set a flick off of everybody's head who was involved around there and they just started freaking i guess going in on him bro that's why you gotta be careful man what you say because you never know bro but think about it she said one word bro it cost that man his life and it was like a like a like a live execution seekers you gotta be aware of what you say bro this power in words Yeah, dude. What the? Who are the adults? You can say that. I am saying that. I was by age. I was by age. And you by maturity. Ah, uh, you maybe. You were a teacher, Mary. It you can't matter. say I was immature. But you don't know him. No, but I don't need to know him in this discussion. He's the child. Who was I'm the talking boss? about you. Who was the boss? Who was the boss? What? Who was the boss back you know, then? No, was being pursuing me. Who was the boss back then? Trying to flip on <laughs> this is ridiculous. No, this who is was? Ridiculous. Who was? Just say. Just say. Who was the boss? All I knew was what I knew back then. 
Or who was the boss? He was 13, Mary. But who was the boss? This is getting weird. Who was the boss? What? Who? In pursuing the relationship. Who was the boss? This is sick, man. Well, I was the pursuer. Yes. Mary, even as you're but hearing this now, come on, he was 13. Does it matter? It absolutely matters. Oh, well, flaw me. Flaw me as, a, as an... Uh, as an adult? Uh, yes, flaw me. I did the yeah. best I could. What? There's no way she was, like, trying to turn it on him, like, as the freaking interview was saying. Like, bro, it doesn't even matter if he did all that. Like, he was a child. You're an adult in that situation, bro. You gotta... You can not freaking use your morals and stuff just to separate yourself from that, bro. People like that, man, dangerous, bro. Don't want to take freaking accountability for your actions, bro. Seekers, you gotta be aware of people like that. Hello, the mines of Colorado. Hello, my name is Urban. I am a Tommy Knocker. We are the spirits of miners that passed away while working in the mine. We are not evil, but don't play around with us. We can be very mischievous. During the gold rush, mines began digging into the mountains of Colorado. Thousands of men journeyed to the west in hopes of striking gold and getting rich. However, most mines are extremely dangerous, and we would try to warn them of a potential collapse or dangerous gas coming. But since we are spirits, it was tough to warn the miners of the dangers ahead. We would knock on the walls, and it would echo through the mine. This was our first warning. But some miners thought we were guiding them to gold and would start digging towards their doom. We would then blow out their candles and turn off their headlights. Unfortunately, some didn't take our warnings. What is the Siberian dancing lady? So you've probably seen this very eerie viral video of a woman dancing in the streets. The video allegedly depicts some kind of entity known as the Siberian dancing lady. According to some urban legends, if you look directly into the eyes of the Siberian dancing lady, apparently she will possess you or attack you or something of that nature. Side note, this is actually why you keep seeing those sorry for looking into your eyes comments. They are because of the Siberian dancing lady. The Siberian dancing lady is apparently known to jump in front of cars and dance in a very entrancing way that doesn't seem human-like. Now, there have been many reported sightings of this dancing lady, and they're all very, very creepy and very, very eerie. But so far, I don't think there's actually been any kind of report of someone being possessed by the Siberian dancing lady. Mm. So the part about her possessing you is probably made up. But there are so many videos of this dancing lady all over the internet that I personally believe she is a real thing, but we just don't know exactly what she is. Seekers, man. What would, you, what would you do, man, if you just saw in the middle of your neighborhood, in the middle of the night, you just see a lady, a lady just dancing, bro, and it keeps, like, recurring, bro, over and over again? You would definitely think something's up, bro. Something was freaking, I guess, wrong with her, man. The Siberian dancer lady, bro. That really piqued my interest, bro. I'm going to have to do some more research into that, bro. Like, why is she doing all that dancing in the middle of the night? And to say that she's jumping in front of cars, that makes it even ten times more dangerous, bro. Like, that's just an accident waiting to happen. Seekers. Edit. I'm like, what the hell? Today's case is one that shouldn't have even happened. But unfortunately, many girls, just like Lily, will suffer the same fate that she did. In December of 2021, Lily was just 18 years old and she'd been out at a nightclub. And in said nightclub, she ended up meeting 31-year-old Lewis Hayne. Lewis was a father himself. Mm. And the pair were seen on CCTV leaving together. In the CCTV show, it was clear that the two were getting on very well. It looked like they were having a nice time and it appeared that they'd just sort of left the club to have a bit of time to themselves. However, Lily's mum was on her way to pick up Lily, which had been arranged, and Lily had kept in touch with her mum, letting her know that she was nearly at the arranged pickup spot, until eventually she stopped responding to her mum. The pair ended up heading down a back alley, and it's believed that because Lily ended up saying no to Lewis's sexual advances, he murdered her. 
by forcefully ripping off her shirt and then strangling her and dumping her body into water nearby. To make this case even more heartbreaking, Lily's own mother had eventually ended up seeing Lewis walking down the street. She ended up looking at him and she thought he seemed odd, but little did she know he just murdered her own daughter. And to top off and to just prove even further what kind of a person that Lewis is, he then got home and told his girlfriend, his long-term partner, that he just strangled someone. And it was hours later when Lily's body was discovered. So due to him being seen on CCTV with Lily, he was arrested. And in court, he stated that the reason why he killed Lily was because she threatened to accuse him of being a rapist after she found out that he had a girlfriend, which I personally think is utter rubbish. And he was sentenced to a minimum of 23 years in prison. Cases like this should not be happening simply because girls say no to a man. And I really, really hope that Lily gets the justice that she really, really deserves. It's just disgusting. This is one of the worst cases. For two years, bro. Some people, man, they just can't freaking just accept the concept of no, man. No means no. If they say no, then that's it in the discussion, bro. I like to say the freaking mom to hear that she like walked past him, bro, and she saw that something was weird and something was off, man. But to figure out that he freaking took her daughter away from her, bro. Like she knew, I guess, or she felt something off. I'm telling you, man, people, they can, they can sense things like that, bro. I truly believe that, man. And if he can say he just walked in and just told his girlfriend of the actually that she did, but like he just didn't have no remorse. He just said, I did it. Secrets, bro. This world is evil, man. Always gotta be aware, bro. Always. This is human history. This is the murder of Christine Silouan. She was from the Philippines and was a volunteer in church, and she used the church every day from 4 to 6 p.m. On the day of her murder, she went to church as per her schedule, but she didn't come home after that. Her parents then started to worry, and they began searching for her with their neighbors. And what they found is absolutely horrid. They found her body in a farm where half her face was sliced like a piece of pizza, and her face was literally skinned down to her skull. Also, her brain was completely destroyed by acid. The police then started investigating and they checked the cameras and found out that she was with a guy. The people started protesting about this case and the case was then given to special officers. They had a lot of pressure on this. Mm -hmm. A week before this happened, she broke up with her boyfriend so the police took him into custody and he was proving that he was at home all day when she was murdered but officers were completely tired of this case and they then sentenced him as the murderer. But after a few months, a thief was caught in a store where he confessed that he murdered and raped Christine. He said he started talking to her on Facebook with a fake account and was using fake photos of another guy that was pretty good looking. Christine fell for the guy and she assumed that he was about 20 years old and they started texting daily. One day they both decided to meet up at 6pm near the church she went to. But upon arriving, Christine noticed that this was not the guy she was talking to and he was around 40-ish years old. She then refused to talk to him and tried to go back, but he held her hands extremely forcefully. He then took her far away from town and raped her repeatedly and put iron rods inside her personal organs. He then cut her face in half and then skinned her whole head down to the skull. And to make it even worse, he put acid inside of her head. The autopsy also revealed that her tongue, trachea, esophagus, parts of her neck, and her right ear were missing. The self-proclaimed killer of this case named Renato Lanis said that he used barber-type scissors and stabbed her 30 times on different parts of her body and skinned her face. Mm. Christine Silouan was only 16 years old and this case is extremely haunting. There's a picture of her body that was found in the field, but Google did a really good job of not showing it and hiding it. So even if you do go looking for the picture, I don't think you're going to find it. This is one of those cases that after you get done reading it, you just feel some sort of uneasiness. Mm. I feel so bad for Christine's family and I can't imagine finding my daughter in this state. May Christine Silouan rest in peace. This 18 year old- Freaking all a freaking catfish, bro. I tell you man, bro, freaking people, bro. Freaking demented, man.
She made if he can fake it, Tom Pope out to talk to her, but I, she said no because it's true. If he can set was revealed, he just decided to do the unthinkable, man. That's what I'm telling you, like, people behind, behind these profiles and stuff, man, you got to do research into them, man. I guess if you're talking to somebody online, because you can never know, but it can be a catfish. They can be a completely whole different person, bro. You can make a whole different life online, bro. Speaking of scary, man, how you could just betray yourself to somebody else, but you're a completely different person. Seekers, bro. Tell me, have you guys had have any problem in catfish before, bro? Lana was murdered, and you won't believe what her killer said. This is Sally Ann Bowman, and she was born on September 11th, 1987, in Carl South London. She attended the British School for Performing Arts and Technology in Croton. Sally Bowman had dreams of one day appearing on the cover of Vogue and had been compared to supermodel Kate Moss. Mm. After leaving school in 2004, she worked part-time as a hairdresser and model. In January 2005, she joined Post Model Management, a local modeling agency, and she became the face of Swatch Watches and took part in the Swatch Alternative Fashion Week in April 2005. But in September of that year, her life would drastically change forever. On the night of September 24, 2005, Sally Bowman and her older sister Nicole and a group of friends went to Lloyd's Bar in Croton, where they stayed until 1 a.m. Mm. After leaving the bar, Sally Bowman waited outside for 15 minutes before being taken to her friend's house by taxi. She contacted her ex-boyfriend, Louis Broadston, and he agreed to pick her up and take her home after she told him Nicole had been arrested for fighting. She took a taxi back to Croton Town Central, where Sproatston picked her up around 2 a.m., but while in the car, Sally and her ex-boyfriend got into a fight and they accused the other of infidelity, which had been contributed to their recent split. Shortly after 4 a.m., Sally left the car and Louis drove off. Minutes later, Sally was then stabbed in the neck and stomach and was then raped as she lay dead or dying on the ground. Her handbag, cardigan, and underwear and mobile phone were stolen. Police initially treated Lewis as a suspect and he was then arrested. After being held for four days, DNA evidence eliminated him as a suspect and he was released without charge. On June 28, 2006, 35-year-old Croton man Mark Dixie was arrested on suspicion of murdering Sally. He was charged with Sally's murder and remained in custody to await trial. This development came after police discovered a DNA link to the murder, mm -hmm. having taken a DNA swab from Dixie when they arrested him two weeks earlier for allegedly being involved in a brawl at a bar, where he was working as a chef. After mm -hmm. more than 18 months in custody, Mark Dixie went on trial at the Old Bailey in the city of London on February 4, 2008, charged with the murder of Sally Ann Bowman. He admitted to having sex with her after finding her on the ground outside her home, but denied murdering her and said that he did not realize she was dead or dying when he found her. Which is just sickening because we all know he did it and what he did to her. Mark Dixie was then found guilty of Sally Bowman's murder by anonymous verdict on February 22, 2008 mm -hmm. after three hours of jury deliberation. The judge sentenced Mark Dixie to life in prison with a minimum of 34 years, meaning that he is unlikely to be considered for parole until at least 2040. It was also revealed that Mark Dixie was already a convicted serial sex offender. This case is just so chilling and sad because Sally Bowman had dreams of becoming a model and just doing something good with her life. And that went all out the door because this mentally unstable man had other plans. She was just 18 years old with her whole life ahead of her. May she rest in peace. Speaking of case, man, these people, bro, they be doing the mental things, bro. <sighs> Freaking never fails, bro. To say that she was that young as well, man. She had plans for life and all that, bro. It just came along and just freaking ruined it all, bro. Just because of the type of person he was, man. Seekers, bro. So it was like, it's an evil place, man. You always got to be aware because you never know somebody's intentions, bro. You just never know. YouTube seekers, man. If you guys made it with me to the end of the video, you're a real seeker, man, who's seeking the truth. So I appreciate that, man. Guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button, man. Hit that post notification bell, man, so you guys never miss a video. Um, Guys, we're climbing. We're growing. So I really appreciate that. You guys gonna catch you in the next video. I'm out. Peace seekers.